All right, we're up to 26 miles per hour. 27, 28, 29, woo, 30. Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I am really excited to find out what's in this box. Actually, I know it's the Hovsco Hov Alpha 26 inch fat tire e-bike. And I don't typically accept gifts uh, in exchange for videos, but I really wanted this for three reasons. Reason number one, I'm a trail runner, hiker, backpacker, and enjoy exploring the Tonto National Forest behind the house. And sometimes I want a little bit more range and the ability to carry more gear. So I'll bring the Jeep occasionally, but sometimes that's overkill. So I'm looking for something like a fat tire bike to take me out there and explore the backcountry. Reason number two, my wife and I enjoy taking our RV to explore the country, and sometimes we don't bring a tow vehicle, so we're pretty much stranded at the campsite we were visiting. So a couple of e-bikes on the back of the RV would help us go to local attractions in the area, pick up some food, and do things of that nature. Reason number three, I'm a practical prepper that lives in a semi-rural area of Arizona, and we have limited access to goods and services. Heck, the closest place to eat is a biker slash cowboy bar about nine miles from my location. So there's a use case whereby maybe I don't have access to the vehicle, maybe I can't get fuel for the vehicle, and I look at something like an e-bike with an opportunity to get some range and some distance to a good or service that we may need. Now I typically don't do unboxings, but that's part of the deal. Let's check out what's in the box. So far the boxing is impressive. I even like this little cover they have for the seat. So let's pull this out. Got ourselves a tire. Oh my God, okay. That's actually pretty heavy. Well guys, I haven't been on a bicycle since 1996, so this should be fun, but I like what I'm seeing. I love stuff that's overbuilt. Look at these tires. I mean, that's like four inches across. And I gotta tell you, pulling this guy out of the box was uh, some heavy duty lifting. And uh, I think it's gonna serve me well in the back country. So I'm not sweating because it's difficult to put this bike together. It's 110 degrees out here in Phoenix. So hopefully the GoPro does not melt. So I ended up losing some footage during the install due to the heat, but the installation only took about 45 minutes to an hour and I used two references. One was the included manual and the other was the YouTube video by Hovsko. The installation instructions were a little bit different, but it was enough for me to assemble the bike. And the nice thing about this kit here is that they actually included a little tool roll. So in general, I'm happy with the installation and now it's time to go ahead and add a bit of pressure to the tires. All right, guys, I probably should have uh, read the manual before I did the first test drive. We'll see how this goes. It's a little overcast. There was some thunder this morning, but I'm ready to give the bike a shot. Let's hit it. We're going to go pedal assist number five. Give it a go. A little bit of a dirt road. 18 miles an hour. All right, we're up to 26 miles per hour. 27. 28, 29, woo, 30. There's a trail called Andy K. I wanted to see if we can hit that. Let's see if we can do seven miles, some off-road and some street road stuff. Oh, oh man. All right, guys, we're gonna hit our first climb. It just rained a few hours ago, so this should be fun. Let's hit it. Pedal assist is amazing. Oh, okay. Yeah, the assist is kind of rough on this incline. Yep. Oh, it's like we're at the gym, even with the assist. So with the pedal assist, I'm at 26 miles per hour, but we're flat ground right now. So that first ride was a lot of fun. I covered eight miles, variety of street and dirt roads. Uh, I had a few issues with a couple of the climbs really had to pedal even with the assist on. All right, guys, we're uh, on our way out to the Tonto National Forest. Uh, basically, I just wanted to film my closing thoughts, pros, cons, and share the journey over the last two weeks with you. But I got to tell you, I'm loving this Hobsco Hob Alpha e-bike. Oh, man. Well, guys, I was trying to film my 
uh, basically recap video, pros, cons of the Hobsco Alpha, and I got a flat. I knew my terrain was going to be kind of rough for this bike, and I have not made the investment yet in going tubeless tires, and I have not yet made an investment in uh, a repair kit. So that's on my list. I need to bring some tubes with me, but it uh, looks like I'm going to be walking this bike back uh, about a mile and a half to two miles. So we're still going to do the review. I just want to go ahead and uh, share with you guys, be honest. But yeah, I don't exactly know where I got the flat, but this guy is pretty much down for the count. My terrain is not the friendliest, hence the flat. And this bike is not the lightest. Well, folks, after the repair, I finally made it out here, did a dry run of bikepacking. We'll talk about what that is later, but basically I was able to adhere the rear rack to the back of the frame here and then use an old 10 liter dry bag and then just a very modest camp uh, for the morning while we talk about all the things I've learned about this bike, including specifications, pros, cons, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and grab a cup of coffee. Well guys, it's been a blast the last two weeks testing out the Hovsco Hov Alpha. I put about 125 miles and covered a variety of terrain. This thing has really brought me back to my youth. Again, in all transparency, I am not a uh, bicyclist. I haven't been on a bicycle since 1996. So this is my first e-bike, my first fat bike, and in general, my first mountain biking experience. So for those of you who've been with the channel, you know I love sharing experiences. That's what this channel is all about. Typically I do amateur radio, but today I'm trying to bridge some of the backcountry stuff like me running comms out here in the national forest with potentially something like an e-bike and I'm absolutely a believer. All right, so let's get into some of the specs. I've covered a variety of terrain out here and those 26 inch by four inch tires have been amazing. I've been able to handle basically the loose dirt in our area, gravel, uh, dirt with some degree of rocks and then the street has absolutely been no issue whatsoever. Now my terrain is a lot rougher especially out here in the Tonto National Forest. We primarily have some 4x4 uh, pathways but they have a lot of rocks so there are portions where I actually have to walk the bike. I would say out here I need to walk the bike about 20% of the time and I think once I get a mountain bike class under my belt I'll probably be able to do a little bit more as I get more comfortable but right now tires are amazing. So I did have a flat and the guys at Sunset Cyclery were able to get me back up and running. That flat was not a knock on this bike. It does run tubes. It does not run tubeless, but that is probably an investment I'm gonna make in the future to change out the whole tire and replace it with something that will allow me to go to a tubeless system. But I do have a kit now, thanks to those guys. Thanks Dylan and Gabriel for helping me out. You guys were amazing. So the size of the bike will accommodate a rider that's about five foot three to six two. I'm actually fairly short at five foot seven and 180 pounds. And I usually carry anywhere between 20 and 40 more pounds. And the ride is actually pretty good. I would say for my frame, given the 26 inch tires, it's a little bit difficult to clear uh, the rear rack when I have it on there with my gear. So I would say if you're a taller rider, you're probably gonna have better luck with this bike. Uh, my wife was actually planning on using this bike and she's five foot four and we can't go with this one. We're gonna be looking at one of the uh, smaller uh, Hovsco bikes for her to basically ride along with me. The Hob Alpha is a seven speed bike with a 750 watt rear hub motor. And I gotta tell you, it really did help to have the assist. I've never been on an e-bike before and it's really cool. This one actually has five different levels of assist, starting with uh, basically zero with no assist whatsoever. You just pedal and uh, treat it like a normal bike. So the prepper in me loves the ability that the electrical system can go down and they can continue to use it as a normal bike. But pedal assist one through five is absolutely amazing. Uh, the more assist you want, the higher you go. Uh, I will tell you what's interesting about it is that this bike comes shipped with a class two setting by default, which means you can go about 19 miles per hour when engaging the throttle. And then if you download the Hobsco app, you can go to a class three. Make sure you take a look at the rules and regulations in your areas. I have not yet, but with class three, it opened me up to about 29 miles per hour when I had pedal assist number five and I was actually pedaling. So it's really cool. Uh, I was able to cover actually 14.2 miles from the bike shop back to my house in almost no time. I think my average uh, speed was about 26 miles per hour. So that pedal assist is a game changer. The other really cool feature about this bike is that it has a torque sensor instead of a cadence sensor. So as your pedal, it senses that and will actually assist you based on your pedal assist level. And it really feels like a very smooth ride. I don't have any experience with the uh, 
cadence sensors, but I gotta tell you, I'm loving uh, the, the ability to have that smooth transition from pedaling to have the assist. So let's talk a little bit about the battery. It comes stock with a 20 amp hour battery, which is more than sufficient for what I'm trying to do and the distance I'm going. Now the manual says you'll get anywhere from 60 miles to 80 mile range, and it all depends on your weight, how much uh, you've loaded onto the bike, what type of terrain you're on, whether you're flat, uphill, and how much you're actually pedaling and using the pedal assist. So your mileage will vary. Uh, I would say that I've only depleted mine to about 60 to 75% and my longest ride has only been about 26 miles. Again, I'm pretty much pedaling uh, the whole time. One more thing, it comes with a charger, and it's a three amp charger. So if we just do the simple math of a 20 amp hour capacity with the ability to charge at three amps per hour, you're looking at anywhere from six to seven hours, assuming you've fully depleted it. So it's really nice to get up and going. Now, as a prepper, when I do my part two video in a few months after I do my three month review, I will have solar, a 48 volt solar system already decked out on this thing that I can take with me so that I can be fully grid independent to charge on the road. So stick around for that. So let's talk a little bit about the pros. One thing I wanted to be able to do with the e-bike as someone who comes from a trail running, hiking and backpacking background is I wanted the ability to go farther and be less personally resource depleted. And I absolutely nailed that. I came out about three to four miles today and I felt fantastic. My, my heart rate was nice and low. And now I have the ability to enjoy the area, enjoy the camp and even go a bit farther out if needed. The other cool pro is the throttle assist. You can actually engage that throttle from a dead stop. What I found was you actually want to make sure you're perfectly lined up and on decent terrain to get you going. So it's nice when you need a little bit of a push to get you going, especially if you have a little bit of an incline. Now the biggest pro for this bike is the pedal assist. I can't tell you how amazing that is. You can pedal as little as you want or as much as you want. If you don't pedal though, you're only gonna be able to achieve speeds of about 19 to 20 miles per hour. And if you do pedal and have the class three portion unlocked, there's no problem going 29 to 30 miles per hour with my size frame and in my terrain. So pedal assist absolutely is a game changer. If you have never been on an e-bike before, definitely give it a try. So there are two cons based on my experience and how I intend to use the bike. The first one is the weight. This bike comes in at 77 pounds, completely stock. And I ran into an issue when I had to walk the bike home when I got my first flat, uh, mostly because I wanted to get onto this bike so that I would not be resource depleted. And I was more tired walking home with the bike, especially with those hills. We also have pedestrian access into the Tonto, but it's a very narrow gate. And I tried lifting that 77 pounds straight over my head and it is a nightmare. So I'm actually taking a longer way around to take the entrance that uses the vehicle entrance. So if you're weight sensitive, you might want to reconsider this bike. If you really don't care, it's going to be perfect. Personally, my wife, uh, for her, that was the deal breaker. She does not feel comfortable having to push around a 77 pound bike. So we're going to be looking for a slightly lighter bike for her and one that is a smaller frame. So the second con for me was the fact that these do not come with a tubeless tire system. Again, I'm brand new to this entire scene, but I had my puncture within the first 100 miles of taking out the bike. And uh, personally, I want thicker uh, sidewalls. I want the ability not to have to change a tire out in the field. And again, my terrain, I plan to use this pretty much heavily in the backcountry where we have lots of rocks. We've got choya in the middle of the road. Heck, I even ran over a, a gopher snake the other day. Um, not that it would impact the tire, but you get the point. So make your own decisions based on your terrain. But um, out here, I'm gonna start to make the investment and change out the entire wheel or entire sets of wheels so that I can go to tubeless probably in the next few months. So I had two small issues. The first one was related to the kickstand during the initial assembly and the holes did not quite line up between the kickstand and the frame. It looks like the tolerance was just a bit off and I was not able to properly seat the threads. I contacted Hovsco support and they're sending me a new kickstand and also referred me to the installation. So that was one issue. The other one was the Hovsco app. I'm running the uh, Android application or an Android phone and I was running in dark mode. Now in the current build as of uh, August, what is this, August 6th, 2023, I found that uh, at least for uh, my Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus that I could not read uh, a lot of the text uh, for whatever reason. And the workaround for right now was just to switch the uh, Android OS from dark mode to light mode. Everything looks good after that. But in general, pretty happy. Those were the only two big issues I had. 
All right, folks, so let's talk about what's next. I'm gonna do a review in about two and a half to three months. And number one is I need some training. I'm gonna take a mountain bike course to get some basics under my belt, along with a bicycle maintenance class. Two, I'm in the process of assembling a repair kit. I don't want to be stranded again and also want to be able to have the ability to use those tools to effectively fix this bike if needed in the field. So I discovered this thing called bike packing by accident. Had no idea it was a thing, but basically I'm going to be looking at decking out this bike. Um, I'm actually kind of happy with the 10 liter dry bag. I don't think I'm going to change that out at all, but I am going to go to a frame pack here for the center and a few other things. And I'm going to try my hand at maybe an overnight trip to start and maybe a two or three day trip. So stay tuned for that. I think that's going to be the kind of three month review video is to see how far I've gone on this journey in terms of uh, improving my skills, getting some tools, doing some bike packing. And for those of you guys who have been with the channel, we're gonna do some amateur radio stuff, so some off-grid communication capabilities, and then obviously we're gonna introduce a 48 volt solar system so we can field charge this guy. All right guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Oh, and hit that thumbs up button if you like my quirky videos. Uh, they're not the uh, most polished videos, but uh, you know, I sure have fun making them for you guys. All right guys, cheers.